Hey guys, someone sent us an email recently asking if we could show some Japanese pottery. So that person's timing was pretty good actually because we sort of had this planned. So this place uh, is on the site of a very, very old pottery gallery that's been there for a pottery company that's been there for a couple of hundred years used to make sake pots and uh, pipes and uh, sort of traditional Japanese pottery but has sort of adapted itself to um, all sorts of stuff now as you will see very cute Sort of interesting actually this place, the uh, pottery is a bit of a reflection, they're tanuki, we've shown you tanuki before guys, you know about tanuki, but it's interesting that this place is a real interesting reflection of uh, Japanese culture, Japanese society, old and new, so you can see lots of old stuff like the tanuki, but as you'll see there's also other stuff too, sort of more modern um, aspects of Japanese society that show up in this shop so anyway you'll see more than enough uh, pottery here to keep that person that, that requested it happy owls these images too not just in pottery but uh, in drawings and old pictures and all sorts of stuff so if you come to Japan you'll see tanuki and you'll see images of owls um, in all sorts of stuff all sorts of art and all sorts of images and in advertising and in company signs and as uh, the beckoning cat maneki neko beckoning cat we actually showed you maneki neko once before i think but there are umbrella stands maneki neko it's like garfield doesn't it <laughs> i don't think it is but it looks like him well tanaki tanaki a big image here I love the tanuki. Sort of a tanuki, sort of a symbol of uh, happiness and comfort and and contentedness or something. Tanuki image is really popular. So you can see sort of some, mm, what would you call it, a bit of a mix of sort of traditional, traditional. Uh, pottery there and more modern sort of stuff like this I quite like this thing this is quite nice with the light coming through it so like all videos some people like some stuff some people like other stuff so I just have to show it all to you and that keeps everybody happy so probably the most famous Japanese pottery outside Japan is the teapots, of course, because it's sort of a symbol of the Japanese uh, sado tea ceremony. And, you know, of course, most Japanese houses have teapots like this. Well, not necessarily like this, but with the handle and the spout, that sort of style. Uh, these are burners for oil, oil burners. So little candles inside them and you can burn oils or... Uh, oh, what do they burn? Tea? There's some people burn tea on tops of these things. Um, makes a unique um, tea smell. Burn, burning tea leaf smell, surprisingly. But quite a common fragrance that fragrance around Japan you'll smell the burning tea smell I don't know why but it's uh it is a popular smell oh look there it is there it is in that thing there in that uh, top of that pot there it is look Again, you can see the owl image. Around the world, the owl seems to be a symbol, doesn't it, of uh, wise uh, countenance, I think they say. 
So Maneki Neko, uh, the right, if, if it's beckoning, the beckoning cat, and you often see these outside shops and things, or people sometimes have them in their homes, and the, I think it's beckoning, if it's beckoning with the right hand, it's to attract money, um, supposed to bring money, like good luck, money luck, and if it's attract, uh, the left hand, supposed to bring friends or something. And this bunch of dragons here is because, of course, next year is the year of the dragon, so there's a variety of dragons here that people can buy to take home and put in their Genkan or elsewhere to try and attract uh, good luck next year. Interesting, some sort of traditional style dragons here, some sort of modern stylized versions as well, sort of interesting. I like these guys, check these guys out. So they're in Cesar, they're on their knees bowing. And at least three at the end. Classic. So that's the, the polite Japanese bow, of course, if you're on your knees. That's the polite way to bow, right down your nose is touching touching the tops of your hands. And there's the old style uh half bow, Ray, uh what's it called? Um What's it called? Not Ray. Ray is a normal bow. But yeah, half bow. Half bow it is. And these guys showing sort of prosperity and happiness. So fat bellies and lots of fish. This couple. I love these guys. Check these guys out. great and the monk the fat monks are common symbol you'll see this a, a lot around Japan as well so he's fat and happy and contented and obviously well fed it's a very common symbol and a couple of Buddhist symbols here that guy's uh, Kanan Sama maybe Buddhist he's a Buddhist uh, symbol Buddhist deity I think maybe and here's back to some more traditional stuff again so you'll notice um, these pots here have actually got lots of uh, writing on them and that's usually poetry or sort of verse or profound some sort of profound stuff so these are a bit more traditional it's beautiful aren't they And as you can see, not that expensive, a couple of hundred dollars each, $250. Pretty amazing when you consider how much work's gone into them. This one there, it's about $140, $150. It's amazing, isn't it? Ah, yeah. So she's pouring him his sake, you see? She's got the little sake bottle, pouring his sake for him. You can see what I mean, can't you? The flavor of the culture and aspects of the culture flow through all this stuff. You know, Tanaki, Tanaki with his wife and she's pouring in a sake. That's pretty Japanese. Don't get much more Japanese than that, do you? Um, these are outside features. So there's the owl again. Another owl in a side of thing and water. Water's a big thing in Japan too, of course, you know, or Mizu. So it's considered to be... Mm, very special of course life giving thing water and rice and things like that that are essential to life in Japan are, are sort of revered so water features and, and any sort of water is considered to be very special
recognize that style don't you the white with the blue there's the lions again it's a Buddhist symbol the lions or used in connection with Buddhism I guess they're used in connection with other stuff as well aren't they but you got the guy drinking his sake again oh there's look there's a we, we really need an old Japanese teacher with this because there's so many stories here that I just can't quite remember that there's the the, the fat monk with his bag of kids and there is a f story there's a there's a story in Japanese culture about that I can't quite remember what it was now if any of you guys can remember please put it in the comment section but there's been a lot of that stuff here, you guys. Uh, we really need we really need an old Japanese teacher to explain a lot of this stuff to us. The lions and the, the monk with a bag of kids and what's the story with the cats here? <laughs> uh, I just shoot the video and show you the video, guys. More maneki nekos. There we go, we can ask that teacher which, which hand was which. I think it's the right hand attracts money. If it's got its right hand up, it attracts money. If it's got its left hand up, it's attracting friends or people. Something like that, I can't remember. Oh, there's a good one. Look at that traditional Maneki Neko. <laughs> Isn't that cool? In the kimono on its knees. That's very cool. Uh, umbrella stands umbrella stands very almost every business in Japan must have an umbrella stand at the front door it's a big thing here the video coming about umbrellas umbrellas is a big part of life in Japan no matter what the weather <laughs> That's a nice thing, isn't it? The light inside it. No, oh, there's a bunch here that they've either got little light bulbs inside them or they've got candles inside them. So yeah, this place is interesting balance. It's got it's got the old traditional stuff with the teapots and the old style sake pots and glasses and stuff it's got all the old style stuff but then the, the modern stuff as well so it's yeah interesting place well the people that are still watching i guess are thinking it's an interesting place the other people are thinking 16 minutes of pottery i'm out of here there's the happy monk again i think this guy's modeled on takuan i could be wrong but there was a monk back in the miyamasashi miyamoto masashi times there was a monk very famous monk who wrote some very profound stuff and used to give advice to the emperors and all sorts of stuff and he was uh his name was Takuan the guy that that invented the Takuan pickle or something like that I'm not the Japanese teacher guys <laughs> but yeah I think I think that's who this, this jolly monk's modeled on is Takuan maybe There's the Tanaki again. Yeah, that's right. Um Oh yeah, little uh, alcohol bottles or alcohol, what would you call those things with a little tap at the bottom. So I guess you'd put your sake in there or whatever else you wanted, I guess. You'd put your scotch in there if you wanted to, bourbon. But again, interesting combination of sort of older style, Japanese style and sort of modern, more of a modern style too. Very cool. Oh, here's one for you people lovers of the cuteness how about that hello kitty pottery <laughs> Q 
barbecue, don't they? Less than $10 each. That's pretty good, isn't it? Bit more cuteness there. Must be the cute corner, that corner. Oh, yeah, this is a f just to finish off, guys. These things are obviously seals. Uh, and you can see they've got little caps on there. Take the caps off and um, fill these things with hot water. And obviously they heat up. And the idea is, of course, Japanese winter's pretty cold. So in winter, you can fill these things up with hot water. And your cat or your dog can uh, lie on them to keep themselves warm. Like that. Interesting idea, isn't it? Anyway, I guess that one person who requested a pottery video is the only person still watching. But um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. More videos coming soon.